stocks jump after strong gains in the US overnight, supported by big gains also in Adani stocks and financials. Healthcare and consumer discretionary are the weak links in the market. Adani stocks spring up after Maki Global Investor GQG Partners buys over 15,400 crores of stock from the promoters in four group entities. The fund CIO reposes faith in Adani Group's growth prospects in a significant endorsement after the Hindenburg allegations. Can't say yes or no on reports of Tata Motors looking at raising more funds for its EV business, says the MD Selesh Chandra. Adds that they are well funded for two to three years and the car maker also hopes to hit the next 5 million production mark in under eight years. Tech Mahindra CEO CP Gurnani tells CNBC TV18 the company's $500 million products and platform business can double in three years. He adds that the details of the plan's accession will be revealed soon. And Gale gains after the regulator proposes a 41% hike in pipeline tariffs, while Alembic Pharma slips on a 1,150 crore rupees impairment of its capex. Hello and welcome. You've tuned into Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me as always is my co-anchor Pavitra Parekh. And what a buoyancy in the market today after several days of concerns that we had seen. And it's a widespread participation yes. as we look at the market. So it's not just the Adani stocks, but of course that sentiment has spilled over to most financials as well. So therefore, if we really take a look at Nifty 50 at the current moment, 1.4% up in trade with 237 points uptake. 17,560 levels. So that's a buoyant market. When we look at the bank nifty, that is the one really leading the charge from the front. Over 2% gain at the moment and mid caps also participating, but a large underperformer compared to the key indices. 0.68% up in trade. But there is widespread participation and the big boys like Reliance Industries, HDFC Twins, as well as SBI, ICICI Bank are some of the ones really contributing to the big gains that Nifty 50 is seeing today. But not to forget some of the contra movers like Ultra Tech, Tech Mahindra are the ones sulking in trade. Advanced decline ratio is not a surprise that it's heavily in favor of the advances today, Pavitra. Oh, absolutely. I think we were craving this kind of screen for a while, right? But it's a 5% up move on the PSU Bank Index. So take a look at that sector. I mean, of course, all of these stocks are bouncing on the kind of positive sentiment that's come through after this big investment, in, you know, into the Adani Group companies. The exposure is not very high, but just on, you know, that positive sentiment, all of these stocks bouncing well in trade. Some of them are up on your screen, but it's pretty much the entire pack which is doing well. The other index which has done well this week, they include the Nifty Metal as well as the Nifty Real Estate Index. So for the week, you're seeing the Nifty Real Estate Index, which is up 9%. The Nifty Metal Index is up 3.5%. And once again, you're seeing good moves come through in a lot of these metal players. So some of the larger ones will be up on your screen as well. Uh, that's what's going on with the market action. But you know, if you're looking at it on a complete weekly basis, the Nifty is up around half a percent. But the real action has been in the mid-cap space and the small-cap space. So the broader markets have really held up well, you know, this week. So the mid-cap index is up 2% and the small-cap index up around 1.3% as well. But that's what's going on with the market action. Let's talk about the top story this afternoon. Adani Group stocks fire up post-bulk deal data disclosure. So the Adani Group promoters have sold shares in four companies to US-based marquee investor GQG Partners. This is for 15,446 crore rupees, like we've been telling you. The promoter entity, SV Adani Family Trust, sold 8.86 crore shares in Adani Ports, valuing at around 5,282 crores. The trust also sold shares worth 2,806 crores in Adani Green Energy and another rupees 18,098 crore worth of shares in Adani Transmission. The rest, of course, the largest bulk of it was in Adani Enterprises, which was 5,460 crores. Just a quick brief, GQG Partners manages assets worth $90 billion globally and Rajiv Jain is the chairman and CIO. They've also made significant you know, holdings and investments into other uh, Indian companies as well. The list is up on your screen. So a lot of the blue chip companies is what, you know, they have invested in. So definitely a big sort of confidence boost when they invest in the Adani group. 
That's right. Uh, and that's what market is really reacting to. So the Adani counters after a very, very long lull, after a few days of green tick today, actually adding to the momentum in full gusto. But post the stake sale also in the four uh, group companies, especially by the promoters one needs to mark, well, City estimates free float increase will lead to inflows. Vivek Ayer, my colleague, is here with all the details and the understanding on that. Vivek, what happens from here on? What is City saying? Well, the important part to note is that, you know, the stake sale that happened yesterday or the block deals that happened yesterday have gone from the promoter group entities. So, which basically means that the free float market capitalization of the company has increased, which actually gives more headroom as far as foreign inflow is concerned. On the back of that, what City is estimating is that in the upcoming May review, you may actually see a weight increase as far as these four Adani Group stocks are concerned. What is it that they are saying? In Adani ports, they anticipate between 70 to 80 million dollars of inflows, Adani Enterprises, 90 to 100 million dollars of inflows, Adani Green, between 40 to 50 million dollars of inflows. Also, recall the scheduled outflow in Adani transmission that was to transpire in May, they believe it could get reduced by almost 50 percent. Um, now, other than that, the important thing to keep track of is the promoter entity pledge share issue, which also, you know, is one of the important aspects to watch out for in this particular group. So, Adani Enterprises, 2.66 percent stake uh, is pledged. Uh, Adani Port, 17.3 percent stake. Adani Transmission, 6.62 percent stake. And Adani Green, 4.36 percent stake. The market value of the entire pledge holding, uh, as per the current market price, is close to 39,800 crore. It will be interesting to see how that particular number moves, you know, post this entire transaction. All right, Vivek, thanks a lot for getting us all of the details there. In fact, remember to discuss more on the Adani saga. We will be live on Facebook as well as Twitter today at 2 p.m. with our digital offering, Who Moved the Market? So definitely tune in for that detailed conversation. But staying with Adani Group, the Supreme Court has formed a six-member committee headed by a retired judge to review regulatory mechanism and investor protection framework after the Adani Hindenburg case. The Apex Court has also ordered SEBI to probe the allegations made by Hindenburg and submit a report within two months. Here's a word from market expert Prakash Divan, as well as in governs Sri Ram Subramaniam on all of these developments and what the implications could really be here. This is an opportunistic uh, uh, call that they've made to buy into companies where they see value in the long term and primarily, primarily predicated by the fact that these businesses have very strong assets to, to, uh, to rely on in terms of the things. What it does for the market, uh, which is more important, is it, it tells you that the promoters of this group have actually started making sure that even if they were to sell the family silver, but uh, save the larger this thing, you know, portfolio of companies and the business, doesn't get impact. The regulator should be worried about whether there was round tripping and if there was round tripping, what were the issues of round tripping and whether that is a market wide phenomenon, not just restricted to a group of stocks, but whether it was a market wide phenomenon. So, to that extent, retail investors should. Right now, of course, be specific to the Adani group of stocks, stay away. All right, so those were some of the market opinions really coming in on this mega stake sale. Meanwhile, IMF's KV Subramanian, he said that fresh investments in the Adani company show that there are valuable fundamental aspects to the group. Listen in. Investors put their money where their mouth is. The fact that investors have put in money, I think, clearly suggests that there is upside, um, and and that upside uh, uh, should be essentially consistent with the fact that you know there is a lot of you know uh, uh, fundamental uh, aspects to, uh, to the Adani Group that is valuable. When related parties are well recognized and all transactions between them are actually disclosed well, um, I think you know uh, there'll be a lot of uh, um, you know improvement movement in governance that will happen. All right, that is the word from KV Subramaniam on the fresh investment into the Adani group of companies. But with that, we have to get into a short break now. When we come back, we're going to bring you some very exciting excerpts of our exclusive conversation with Tata Motors' Salesh Chandra, so stay tuned.
Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Business Lunch, and let's bring you some exclusive corporate opinion. Tata Motors' MD for the passenger vehicles and electric mobility business, Shailesh Chandra, says that they're currently well funded for the next two to three years for the EV business. He also hopes to hit the next five million production mark within the next eight years. Listen in. I'm sure that the next five million should happen in uh, maybe. Eight less than eight years is what I hope. See, we already have a capacity from the existing facilities, which is uh, the three facilities that we have right now. Since mm -hmm. uh, we are in the generation one EVs, and you know we'll be rolling out the generation two EVs. Uh, just to clarify and explain, what is the generation one, generation two EV? These are more converted products, as you have seen. The Nexon got convert, converted to an EV, then Tiago got convert, converted to an EV. The base platform is the ICE vehicle, which is getting converted. In right. Gen 2, we go for more intrusive modifications in the architecture so that then it can be further electrified with higher range cars. The Generation 3 cars will be the pure EVs. A year back, we had already raised 1 billion and the whole funding got closed, uh, you know, a month back or so. Uh, so we are, for the current, uh, you know, uh, few years, we are pretty well funded. Uh, anything beyond that uh, is uh, is a you know is is a comment I would like to only offer at the right time. Well funded for next two to three years. There are many other ways of raising the fund, including debt route. But uh, we are absolutely open to going any additional route, and anything is possible. So therefore, I would not like to say yes or no. Uh, but uh, from us, any formal comment on that will come at the right time. And do remember to catch the entire conversation with Tata Motors today at 3 p.m. 30. On to the next big corporate, uh, you know, voice on the show today. Well, let's talk about Tech Mahindra. And Tech Mahindra CEO CP Gurnani tells CNBC TV 18 that the company's $500 million products as well as platform business can double in the next three years. Listen in. But, uh... Fair assumption is product and platform would be about less than $500 million business right now. It has a potential to deliver 2x in less than three years. I think it should be uh, soon. I can't give you any indication on that because it's a board's prerogative and um, we are obligated to make sure that uh, the stock exchanges are informed. Uh, so all I can again repeat is that uh, it's a planned succession and it is being done very diligently. All right, that is the Tech Mahindra management. But let's get into a short break for now. There's lots more news and updates coming up in just a bit. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Business Lunch. And a quick look at the market. Well, Nifty 50 is almost at 1.5% uptick at the moment, almost 250 uh, points gain. And Reliance Industries, take a look at that. Uh, really moving forward with a huge amount of gusto, 2% gain on that big boy. Moving on then, India is on track for a bumper wheat harvest, says the Food Secretary Sanjeev Chopra, even as heat wave signs stoke crop concerns. Now he adds that the food grain situation is comfortable. Listen in to excerpts from his conversation with our colleague Abhimanyu. As I mentioned, uh, Central Warehousing Corporation is storing about uh, 45 uh, lakh tons of uh, food grains. Uh, in the wa different warehouses, about 300 of them. And uh, the need for the scientific storage has been felt uh, a number of times in the past, but I think uh, in the recent past, uh, some concrete measures have been taken uh, by CWC to ensure that the food grains are stored in a scientific manner. Uh, all the go-downs of uh, CWC are now registered with the WDRA, which ensure that it is uh, planned and stored in a scientific manner. And more than that, uh, what's being planned in the future is to make these smart warehouses, which would uh, not only have video surveillance uh, uh, with res respect to security, but also these uh, sensor-based uh, mechanisms, which would ensure that uh, the various parameters like uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the atmospheric conditions, uh, the CO2, uh, the temperature, the humidity, uh, door sensors, rodent uh, sensors, all those are put in place which would ensure that the food grains that are produced with such hardship by the farmers of the country are uh, not really wasted or uh, they are uh, stored in an unscientific manner. 
So you recently held a meeting with uh, with several states on uh, on the on the food situation and uh, the uh, the situation on wheat, of course, is being closely looked at by the union government. So, what is the current status of stocks and procurement of wheat? How is the forecast placed like? Uh, so the uh, food grain situation in the country is uh, very comfortable, uh, as uh, we had discovered in the meeting, uh, which was a validation of what uh, we had felt in the past. Uh, the uh, the IMD was also part of the meeting yesterday, and they reported that the wheat condition all over the country uh, is very good. There are no reports of any shriveled grains or any other uh, uh, stress with regard to the weather conditions, uh, even for the next eight to ten days, which is a crucial period for the uh, wheat. Uh, there are no reports as of now with the IMD uh, that any adverse weather conditions are expected. The present temperatures are not uh, so high to warrant any kind of a panic, uh, and we are very hopeful that the weather conditions will hold good over the next uh, week and two, uh, week or two. And uh, we will have the predicted uh, bumper harvest of about 112 million tons. All right, that is the conversation with the Food Secretary. But let me also now bring you some exciting news for all Indian movie buffs. Deepika Padukone has been listed among the celebrities who will present an award at the upcoming 95th Oscars. The Academy unveiled the list of presenters, which include Emily Blunt, Dwayne Johnson, Samuel L. Jackson, amongst many others. The 95th Academy Awards, remember, will be held on the 12th of March at the Los Angeles Dolby Theatre. And just some additional information, India is also nominated in three categories this time around, which is original song, documentary feature, and short documentary. So hoping a lot of awards come home. Oh, yes, uh, we are hoping for a lot, but what a great move for Deepika Padukone Absolutely. as well. Really proud of her. With that, uh, completely out of time on this edition of Business Lunch, Midcap Radar comes up next. Stay, stay with us. <laughs>